Who are you talking to? That was my app. Jay just came through, clipped them. I thought you were cooking breakfast. I've got everything with the eggs cooked, huh? All right. Good morning, y'all. We have a special guest Where coming for, for breakfast, and Cody's actually cooking breakfast this morning. He actually used to cook breakfast all the time, but he's given yeah, up. But on now me. that you're a stay at home mom, I don't have to do that. That's your job. I'm not a stay at home mom. Anyways, we have a special guest coming for breakfast. He's almost here. I guess he's like 40 minutes away now, huh? 20. 20, 20 minutes away? Yeah. Oh. He's about 20 minutes. He's away. only 20 minutes away, y'all. He is from TikTok. He has YouTube, too. So, we'll introduce him when he gets here, y'all. Stay wait. tuned. Keep ranching. Look at that mustache. It's looking good today. Thanks, dear. It always looks good. Thank you. What are you cooking us today, babe? Breakfast tacos. Everybody on TikTok wants to know about your little cooker, so tell tell the YouTubers about your little cooker. So this griddle top came from a friend of ours at church, Miss Amy, that used to make our caps for us. His husband gave me this. It was some deer hunters had abandoned it under a tree a few years ago, so he gave it to me and I refurbished it and then I built the stand and put the burners under it. How'd you break your little deal right there? I don't know. I'm four or five years old. It's just... Oh, that looks delicious. Our special guests should be arriving any minute. I'm excited, but I also like do not, I don't, I'm an introvert, and so meeting new people scares me to death, so I'm kind of, like, nervous, but Cody's here, so he can do all the talking. So in here, we just got taters, some jalapenos and onions, and some bacon. Erica went a little wild on the taters, it looks like. We got way more taters than we got. Well, you got a little, I got a, you were a little light on the bacon. I got what I thought was a pound of bacon, but they've apparently cut them back to Here's what happened. ounces. Here's what happened, guys. Cody, at 11 o'clock last night, we're laying in bed, and he says, hey, do you think we should cook him breakfast? And I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a great idea, but we kind of should have thought about that before 11 o'clock. I mean, and if we were going to be honest, you should have just made sure that we always have something to prepare for breakfast. We do. Stuff that we eat. We don't have what normal people eat. What, what we does just that have, mean? Well, we had like good for you stuff. We had eggs and the English muffins and stuff that we're eating this week. Where I don't buy, I don't keep stuff that. because we don't eat it every day. We don't need to eat it every day. I mean, I want to eat it every day. I want to eat it every day. Anyway, so Cody like, apparently was texting him at 11 o'clock last night and he decided to do breakfast. So hmm. it's going to be Rise with the rooster coffee, guys. Oh, should I make more coffee? How much do you have There's left? There's only like one cup left yeah i would probably put that into one of these and you can offer okay. it to our guests and then make another round all right day. going to make more coffee y'all that that where'd we, we leave off so we were cooking breakfast and we told y'all that we had a a celebrity uh uh social media tiktok celebrity stop by this morning and uh we got matt baker here the the inventor of snuff cup came by to see us he you're on your way where where are you going headed to East Texas to go on a duck hunt. You can put fidgeting with that. It's going to oh, send sorry. the sound through. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I apologize yeah. about that. Yeah, it gets kind of weighty. I'm in big trouble because the last video he made, um, he made a whole video, like a whole day. He videoed himself working on his welder and he had dropped it in his Just pocket. dropped it down in my pocket. And, and the up. whole time it's just like. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's probably so all, your, all your videos. Yeah. Left you get a hold of your, yeah. your mind there and pull you back in oh, there. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> He will. He'll Are you, you even got Matt in the picture? Yes. Okay, well, on the front, you can't yeah, see you can't that. Yeah, so. the front. Um, so anyways, Matt is the originator of Snuff Cup, so he, he brought us a couple, which are great. I don't dip personally. Erica does. I mean, she's <laughs> trying to quit, but uh, <laughs> um, no, but we've got lots of family members that do, so they're going to make great gifts for our family. Um, a couple of things. Matt's got a super neat story. Um, his family farm got sold, and he was want, he wants to buy that family farm back, so that's why... The sole reason he came up with Snuff Cup is to develop something that he could could market and then with the aspirations and the dreams of being able to buy back the family farm, right? Absolutely. All for the farm. So, yep. so guys, if you got somebody that uh, 
that likes to dip or chew and they're all or you you know and you're always in the car with them you're tired of them spitting in a styrofoam cup or spitting in a uh, plastic bottle or something check out snuff cup they're they're pretty neat and matt's got lots of other ideas and stuff that's going to be coming out in the future so keep an eye on him he, he's uh he's really doing something for a dream so absolutely be ready to pair up your bright and early here comes the rooster coffee with the future snuff cup drinkware yeah. that's right <laughs> yeah. oh so so he just slipped it out right there there's some drinkware coming so that's awesome um matt Tell them where they can find you. Um, I know you've got a YouTube page, and so give yep. them all your handles. Yep, we are Snuff Cup on YouTube, Snuff Cup on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Uh, links in all of our bios if you guys want to check us out. Where we can keep they, branching. That's <laughs> right. Where all can they find your products? On those sites, but any other sites they can look at? Uh, we're right now. We're just about exclusively on uh, SnuffCup.com. We're also on Amazon as well. Okay, so y'all check him out, guys. Uh, it's a really neat story. You can check out his videos and see what, everything that's going on with him. And uh, y'all keep ranching. They eat Boy, them some pretty looking ones. Yeah, they're, they've only been on feed for about, not quite 30 days, so. We have you, have we you messed them. around with any, uh, have you messed around with any uh, fly mineral before? Or so, have you ever done any fly controls? Because in Missouri, it's, probably worse than it even is here i mean i've seen you know what's big is the fly mineral back it back in the spring before you right. know they actually have a chance to it's like a larva isn't it or yeah. something so that igr in there it it stops the it you know kind of inhibits the life cycle on those larvae but um we haven't done that here we don't normally have flies too bad but it's just been so dry for so long that once we got those rains about three weeks ago the fly population has just exploded like these these steers, we sprayed them Monday, Labor Day. Was that, was that two weeks ago? Sure. So, uh, I, I mean, well, today's Friday, so it's been nearly two weeks. Oh, so, okay. I mean, we, we soaked them down. There wasn't a fly on them, but in two weeks, they've come back this hard. So, um, but we'll get a good freeze for too long. We'll, we'll keep spraying them along and, and hopefully get them knocked out of them. So, what's your ideal weight you like to put on them? So these steers started out right in the, in the mid seven weights, so seven to 750, and they should finish around 1,400 pounds in January. We'll, we'll uh, harvest them in February, into January, 1st of February. They should, on this ration that we feed, they should gain four plus pounds a day. Four plus pounds a day. Yeah, so they should, they should do pretty good on it. They have in the past. I mean, we've been feeding them this way for about eight or nine years now, so. Uh, this this ration, this whole corn, beef trait, and a here little in, bit of Bermuda grass hay. What about here in Texas? Have you noticed any difference between a red steer as opposed to a black steer so, on the performance uh, of each benefits, pros, cons? So this is the first year we fed any red Angus steers, um, and we're kind of doing a test on that. Um, I do notice, we, so we take care of, of two different sets of cow herds, uh, two, two cow herds for two different men. One of them has all red cows, the other one has nearly all black cows. Um, one thing I notice a lot about the red cattle is when it's hot, they're still out there grazing. They don't get as hot as the black cows do. The black cows shade up a lot when it gets hot, you know. Um, as far as performance, I mean, I don't know who's gonna do better. I mean, th those are are really good red Angus genetics and these are, are good black Angus genetics. I mean, just commercial, commercial cows with registered bulls on them. So we're gonna see who does the best. We're gonna side beside them and see who who has the best performance. So, they bought they all came off the same ranch. Every one of these, all six of these steers. Um, so, we'll have a good idea of, of what's gonna perform better when we get done in February. So, Matt, for our viewers, give them a little give them a little breakdown of what what why you started Snuff Cup and what the goal of Snuff Cup is. Absolutely. Uh, so, why I started Snuff Cup was simply. Uh, to try to earn 100% um, enough money. There is a specific goal for a specific uh, amount that I am trying to reach, and that is a million dollars, 100% earned, all to go make an offer on my family's farm that got sold, which was my grandparents. Um, that reason is personal to me, which I also have a YouTube video I posted, and the, the description is in there if anybody does want to check out why my goal is a million dollars. Um, the goal is to make an offer hard-earned um, and try to buy it back. Awesome, so how old are you? 
I'm 27 years old. 27 year old, um, married, got two two little girls, both two. under two years old. Yep. Um, his family farm got sold. Just you know, like he said, there's some you can check out his YouTube video on, on what happened there. But Matt's goal is just to earn enough money to live in the American dreams. He created a product from scratch. He's gone through the, the development phases of it, the marketing phases of it, the production and delivery with the sole, sole goal is to buy his family farm back. So what better, I mean, that's, that's an awesome, that's just an awesome thing. And uh, we're glad that Matt was coming yep. down to go, go duck hunting and alligator yep. hunting yep. in the, Louisiana the or, plan is or East Texas. East te Southeast Texas, I do know for sure that uh, we are going to duck hunt. I'm not, I'm not so sure on the alligator part yet. I do have a fun fact for anybody that uh, is involved with especially cattle farming. Um, and that supports Snuff Cup, but I dumped all my personal money into that as well, which involved my tractor, my bush hog, my equipment. So every time you guys buy a Snuff Cup, you may have bought a part off my tractor and my bush hog. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, so Matt, he just reached out to us. He said, man, I'm coming down there. Would you guys be willing to you know, meet me while I'm coming down? And we were like, yeah, come on. So he came by, we, we, uh, he traveled all night. You left Missouri, what time this, yesterday? I left Missouri last night at 11 p.m. and I got here, what time was it? I got about here 9:30. about 9.30. Yeah, so he drove, worked all day yesterday on this, at his snuff cup operation and then drove all night, headed down here. So we fixed him breakfast and, and shared a, a lot of time just fellowshipping with one another. He's a fellow Christian, and we're and we're grateful for that. And uh, it's it's good to just meet other people that are that are doing things that are worthwhile. And uh, Matt, thanks for coming by. Man. Hey, thank you. I had a great time. That's right. And uh, y'all check his stuff out. Where can they find you? Can find you? us on snuffcup.com. And where can they find you? Bar7ranch.com. Uh, any merchandise for us? Bar7merch.com. And most of all, never forget to keep ranching. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. I almost nailed it, but I screwed it up. I always do it in the crunch time. Yeah. So, I'll awesome. never, I'll never get into Hollywood like that. I get in trouble when I do a blah 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 like that to clear out my. No, get my. Get, make it yeah. You ever seen any of these trailers, Matt? Do, what is it now? You ever seen these? No, I, so I haven't. I was eyeing this down a minute ago. So, so since we're right here next to Fort Hood, this is this is an old military trailer. So these hooks on the side, these are built to where they can pick them up with a chain and pick them plumb up and load them or drop them out of a helicopter. And uh, these things are perfectly balanced. Even when my welder's in there, you can really you can pick it up by hand the way they're balanced. Um, How much would you take for it today? <laughs> man, <laughs> you, it, you would. I mean, this thing this thing would bring thirty five hundred all day long, just because you can't find them anymore. I mean, these are. Yeah, it's neat. I I can't say I've ever seen one. I mean, it's got a brake on it right here. I mean, you can you can lock the brake on it so it won't roll away. Yep, boy, you sure can, can't you? But Military they made. They don't even put jacks on them because like, the way they're built to be loaded and balanced, where you don't have to have jacks on them, you just right, right. But do you have you seen much deer out here? So we don't have a lot of deer right here. Um, well, it's funny. The reason I asked that question, the last two hours of my trip I'm like man I'm gonna I'm gonna see either a hog or some deer or something yeah. and I was I was looking everywhere as soon as I was picking up the phone to call you I looked down to find your number and I almost smoked one <laughs> and there was no woods around me it was yeah. open field and it somehow two of them had run out but only one of them ran in front deer of me. Deer or pigs? Uh, or deer okay, yeah, yeah it was two does. So we've seen just a few deer crossing but like you said there's no cover here I mean there's not. Right and it doesn't really ever get big enough, you know, like a plains, like the deer that live on the plains to lay down and hide and stuff right. like that. So, um, plus since with our, with these guard dogs around here, we used to see hogs all the time running back across the back side of this grain field right here, because there's a tank right there and another one right over yonder. So they would come down here to water, but since we've got, got those guard dogs up and going good, I mean, they, how they many put, how many dogs do you have now? So we've got two guard dogs right now, um, and then we got two pups left out of the six that that our female had back a couple weeks ago, a few or a few months ago. But those guard dogs, I mean, they 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 work that field, they work the field behind us, they work this up on our neighbors. I mean, they work a big a big swath around here and keep things run off. So we haven't seen many hogs since since they started running, got big enough to start running. So, but. Yeah, we we did we did shoot our limit last night on 
on Dove out of this field right here. Last oh, did night. you really? Yeah, Eric and I did. So actually, I figured out the limit is 15. Oh, so it. So we didn't. So we shot 24, shot 24. I think. Shot 24. 24 have you found Have you found a way y'all like to eat them? So uh, we've we tried we've tried wrapping them in bacon and frying them. Well, we've tried oven, tried frying them, and me personally, I haven't found a way that makes them really appetizing. That that's made them just make you know make me want more. Right. Yet um, the way I cook them a lot of times is I'll. I'll go ahead and breast them, take the, you know, take the meat off of the breast, and then you can wrap a little piece of jalapeno and wrap it in bacon. Yeah. Um, and then I baste them in olive oil and put some, uh, just some, like some Tony Saturay or something like that on yeah. it. Tony we eat most of our Yeah, we give a lot of them away. It's yeah. a lot more, it's a lot more fun to shoot them than it is to yeah. eat them, but uh, right. um, we give a lot of them away, but, but air fry them a lot and that, that oh, keeps yeah. them juicy and tender, yeah. you know, air frying them, so. I will give a tip to anybody out there. Is that recording still? If you ever do come to the, if you ever do get fortunate enough to be able to come visit the Bar Seven Ranch, if you pass a gas station on the way here, <laughs> you better fill up, or else you will be walking home. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, it's uh, it's fun. I mean, yeah, I, quail is a lot better. We go quail hunting every year Have in New Mexico. Have you ever ate quail? Uh, no, I have not ate quail. So before, quail's no. a white meat, or a, it's, it's not like chicken. Not dark like duck. Yeah, is. yeah, it, yeah. I've seen I've seen it before, but I've never I've never ate it. And it's a lot bigger, you know. I mean, you can even eat the legs off of the quail because they've got enough meat on them to keep. Oh, really? So, um, it's way better than dove. It's way it's better than dove. I like it better. It's uh, they're harder to hunt than dove too. I think. I mean, the way we hunt them, we just I've spooked a cubby of quail before, yeah. and it'll about give you a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> like, but like much like Missouri, we've the most of the quail population here in Central Texas is gone. There's not many of them left. So, so what kind of hay is that over there? Them round bales. So the round bales, uh, the ones closest to us are pretty sure they're oats. That's some stuff that one of the other ranchers that we take care of his cows for. We stockpile that here to feed with. That's coastal and and Klein grass on the far bales. The four bales on the far side. And then this is some alfalfa square bales that came out of, I can't remember, Kansas or someplace like that. Um, it, it seemed like I saw, a, and it was, a, it was somebody down in Texas that was paying, I can't remember, it was unreal for an alfalfa square bale. Yeah. Of course, those are the All right, places. guys, that wraps up our visit with Matt from Snuff Cup. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, we sure had a great time getting to know him and just hearing his story firsthand. Um, we followed him for a long time, so that was just really cool. Um, anyways, so y'all, y'all check him out. I'll put his information down below on all the different uh, social media platforms he has and his website, and y'all can give him a, uh, y'all can give him a follow if you'd like. So check him out, and y'all keep ranching. See you next time.